to the couple people who are working about. And I can... Uh, my sound is working. That's good. That's good. But I don't need to hear myself. Just the people who happen to drop by need to hear me. I hope you're all well tonight. Uh, I'm going to keep working on my wonderful little night elven inspired druid. And I'm pretty happy with the way she's coming out. Um, tonight I think I'm going to focus on the, well, purpley bits, which would be that cloak and the little sleeve there, but probably mostly the cloak. Um, and maybe even the little gemstone. So, I am going to, let's see, I gotta go on to the internet, even though I'm already on the internet. I gotta go find Hero Forge, which is where Minnie was made. And I colored her in so I had a guideline to go by, although I'm not exactly painting her up to the color that I picked. Um, did do, do, wait, scroll down, silly thing. Okay, there we go. Found Ms. Zelly. All right, takes a second. And it's probably not, I'm going with this Aslanti Violet. That's probably not bad for what I'm trying to do here. I wonder if I hold this right. There we go. I did hold it right eventually. Hello to whoever just joined us. Yay! There's three of you now! And if you're all just lurking, that's great. I told you I love lurkers. Lurkers truly make the Twitch willow go around. So, but <laughs> it you. There was a couple others other than you, Don. And I will say that was a real, that was a fun session, even though there was no fighting. Then again, I also like to role play. So that was a lot of fun. Although one thing I will say is, poor Tally, who is not a thinker. This is not my thinking character. I do tend to like characters that are pretty smart. <gasps> Caught it. All right. It wasn't even in fight return. Uh, well, that's because Brasha wasn't an head jerk for a change. It was all happy and, yeah, it was kind of weird. Start base coating this. Actually, I failed to hit the ground. <laughs> but, I mean, it didn't fall far. And I will say this, though. These Hero Forge minis, they they are, you can break them. Because, sadly, the first one I bought, I had to end up having to re-sculpt the bow. Well, wait. What do you mean, Aslanti? I did not, don't recall saying Aslanti, but, um, uh, I know this is not a mature thing only, but uh, fuck those guys. <laughs> oh, you know, that would be really interesting if you like when I played the Aeon Throne, where we had no humans. No, I'm not painting an Aslanti. Oh, my help if I actually bring my water over here instead of washing my brush and my drink. That I caught before I put it in there. No, 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 no. No, I'm pa painting a dru I'm playing, no, Zelaine is the character. I don't know if that's where you got it from. Um, and she's, she's my night elven druid for a while, but I'm also made her for, um, she's a Pathfinder 2 character now. And since I've got a, oh uh, yeah, that, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, I have a convention coming up, which she may actually get played. So I decided, well, before the start of October, since I had the time, I would paint her up. Because <laughs> I have plans for October. Oh, yes, I do. But I was going to, hey, if you want to throw the Aslanti into this, uh, if you want to throw Aslanti in our path, that would be really cool. I mean, I love to deal with those assholes. <laughs> I had so much fun playing against the Aeon Throne. Uh, and that was great because that was also a group of non-humans. 
you know, and it's actually kind of bad to be a non-human dealing with the Aslanti since they hate anything that's not human. <laughs> I know, me too. Or at least punching them. No, I mean, T Tally would probably be happy killing them. But I really love playing. Uh, I love playing. You know, someday. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to be the fascist. But remember, we'd be beating up on you. So it might be motivation for you not to kill us. You know, because you wouldn't want a fascist, you know, to kill us. Right? This is a really good color, considering why I picked out for the... Uh, my picture. It's pretty close. Gotta get the paint in there. I don't want any little white spots. At least that people can see. It's a gaming mini, so if I miss something, it's not the end of the world. If it's for competition, then it would be kind of the end of the world. Alright, that. I'm also, I don't care. I'm gonna paint the staff anyways, but I am sort of Clipping the staff. Exactly. See? See? You got it, Dawn. Oh, that was, that was, um, that was fun. I know I, I will have fun and lurk about. Feel free to lurk about. Oh, shh. All right. And I can go back to turning this into an instructional video. Uh, I can't wait for some of the other things that may be coming down the road that I'm going to be able to play in too. So I want to play in all the games. I've noticed this. I just, I love playing tabletop RPGs. I really, really do. To whoever's out there now listening. Um, I can't get enough of them these days. And it's like I have already have a whole bunch of games that I already play. And I keep wanting to add more games and play with more people. You just missed Dawn. <laughs> I thought you were lurking. Unless you were the other one lurking. But I don't think so. I see a couple people joined in. Hi, Frog. Frog, you play. I'll tell you what. I love your character so much. I am so thankful you joined us. With the cutest character ever. I said, if you... As I said, if, okay, um, come on, just nuke a TV dinner so you can hang out. <laughs> I'm enjoying chatting. Um, I love Keith so much. But I said, if you, if you quit the game, though, no more scritches for Keith. Yeah, no, I mean... I had thought you were thought you were like busy too, so you know I didn't have much hope you would ever actually join us. And then lo and behold, there you were. But I'm so ex yeah I'm excited about some of the possible opportunities to play coming up. Um. Some of them Twitch stream too. That would be so that would be exciting. That would be really exciting to do a Twitch stream with you guys. <laughs> Don is don't tell Don this, but he's awesome. I would I would yeah I would be glad to sit at a table with him anytime as a player or as the GM. But that was a lot of fun. That was a fun session. I mean, 
That said, it, unfortunately, Tally's not a thinking character, so when you guys were all doing the investigation part, I'm going, because I had no idea. Because I'm like, ah, she's not, this is not really her shtick. It's, it's their shtick, and it's, it's fine, and it's good that they get to, you know, that we do get to see some uh, investigating and thinking and stuff. Checking out. Oh, actually, I think this does. I suppose I could, you know, actually go look at the uh, the picture. But I'm enjoying looking at chat. So, all right, you know, I do gotta go look at the pictures. But Keith, yeah, but Keith, I can see Keith. Keith would still make more sense. Oh, that is her hair. That's fine. Her hair is going to be purple anyways. <laughs> Couldn't tell if this is more cloak or her hair. And actually when I go to the picture, it's more hair. So. I felt, you know, one thing that I thought was really cool in that session was I really felt like Keith stepped up that he's like almost the lead in this rather than Brasha. Brasha may be my boss, but you, you, it's, but you, you were actually like the lead in the investigation. You were the one that the, the Starfinder Society actually came to. And then you came to us for help. And if anybody watching this later wants to know what I'm exactly talking about, or who is lurking, uh, who might not know, um, I'm in a Starfinder podcast called Hex Grid Heroes, and you can download our episodes anywhere. Fine, of course. Anywhere you can download fine podcasts, even ours. I don't know if it's a fine podcast, but I think we're pretty good. <laughs> It's a fun game. That's all that really matters to me. I'd play if there were no audience because it's so it's so much fun. It's kind of like the murder hobos too. I'd play that even if there was, even if no one was around, you know, no one was watching. And I do play plenty of games like that because uh, I'm in. Oh lord, I don't know how many games now. I'd say too many, but I haven't found my limit yet. I'm gonna start painting up the little gemstone that's on her belt too. Which I'm sort of guessing here because it's not really clear on where the lines are. There. Oh, we could be much more off. Oh, well, that's true. You know, I thought we were pretty bad until I met those awesome people from England <laughs> from, um, was it Cosmopunks? Is that the one we, has so many friggin' awesome, you know, names out there. Seriously, seriously, Frog, you know I would do it. I have never met a game I haven't wanted to play. I mean, there's very few people I won't sit down at a table with and play. I have far more people out there than I want to work. I have like a bucket list of GMs I want to work with. Um, you know, and I've actually been knocking some of those dream GMs off. I mean, there's some like Matt Mercer that I probably will never knock off the list. Let's face it, who, you know, He's my style, so hence I would love to work with him. But I mean, Don Don definitely was up there because I, I I used to listen to I was listening to the episodes. Oh, it was the sinister shenanigans in Spain? I thought it was one of the Brits because isn't he's from? Because he's from like Arizona, right? They were from somewhere out western U.S. 
If I recall that the sinister shenanigans was located. Oh my lord, that was You know what's funny about that bit? Is I did not I had totally forgotten where that actually uh, I knew I had seen it before I came to that. Oh, okay. You reacted to the line being dropped, Scouts of California, but the rest are from the south. So I realized that whole um, sorry, I hope I don't get the mature audience tag in here. The whole cum gutters thing, that came from uh, Rick and Morty. And I'd totally forgotten if I'd seen that episode where they had referenced that term. And it's like, I couldn't, I must have blocked it out. I think, I think, Don, you wanted us. No, it's okay, it's okay. They don't say, like, if you look at the terms of the service, they don't say, they don't really say much about language. And, I mean, there's not that many of you on, so I'm not too worried about it. If I ever deem it, I will, I will eventually, I will put the mature audiences tag on this, but I think it's pretty tame. Or it's over people's heads. Okay. Just letting the cloak dry. But I really am enjoying the whole hex grid heroes experience. I'm still I'm still a little shocked that I'm, I'm actually doing it because I never, I never thought I would actually be on it for realsies. So, and I'm really thankful I am. I'm also thankful to be Murder Hobo too, so. I really enjoy both my public, I enjoy all my games. There really isn't a game I don't enjoy that I'm playing right now. But the crazy thing is, I'm probably going to add two more games <laughs> to my already, my, my, my list of them. Um, because DJ wants to run Vampire the Masquerade. And he'd do that on Saturdays after our um, Rhyme of the Frost mating game. So I'll have, two, I'll have a stream and then two games. And then... Um, Oh, Lord. Moist. Gareth! I'm just talking about all the games I'm in. And then we're adding... Um, what else are we adding? What else am I adding? Oh, oh, added. I added it already. So on the Thursdays that I'm not playing Murder Hobo, I am now in a, a, a Pathfinder 1 AP. I need... I'm glad you're here, because it's like... It's like I want, I want, I'd like a few more people to hang out with me, but hey, I got people talking to me. That's all that really matters. So here, I'll put it on here, even though there's not a huge amount. By the way, guys, this is, this is the other half of the goblin double feature. Don't worry about it. God, don't worry about it. Um... Actually, you know what? Because you may start using this as an actual stream, I'm going to do shout out for Hex Grid Heroes, too. Might as well start building an audience, right? <laughs> there may, right now, Hex Grid Heroes is a podcast and strictly an audio podcast, but there's been some talk that there may be some streaming on there. So, <laughs> might as well start getting people to check it out. But Gareth is, yeah, don't, I said, don't worry about Monday. I don't care. It's fine. I'm not going to, all I'm saying, leave it as there's been talk. I'm not going to say that anything is set in stone yet. I believe we were talking. Oh, wait, no, you popped off. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing then. 
Also, basically, there's, there's two people involved and two people who are not that are on this channel right now. Oh, unless I don't know who the, the fourth person is that's on here with, with us. All right, so with that done, I need to... But hey, who knows? Might as well get some people love over there anyways. Um... How do I want to do this? How do I want to shade this cloak? I'll go to the, I'll go to the quicker choice. Once again, this is for a game. So she is a game character for tabletop games. So I am not shooting for a competition level. Well, I want my comp, my uh, ta tabletop guys to be, let's see. Oh yeah, that works good. Well, I want my tabletop minis to be to be good and presentable. I mean, nobody's gonna look at them with a microscope. I don't know if this is dark enough. Nah. I will play it. Yeah, I see. I, I don't know if it's dark enough though. I think I'm gonna do black. I could do green. Green might be an interesting color to wash it with, but uh, I will play, you'll have to teach me the system. I haven't played that one, but I mean, I've been playing games for 30 years. So, you know. Do a mix. I have Bealtan, Bealtan Green. I do have another one, but it's black and purple. So yeah, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with black. Um, I would have to learn, but you said I will play anything these days. I know I really, really like um, D and D and in high fantasy, but I've heard of kids on bikes. Of course, I mean I try to stay tuned for what else is out there. And I've heard it's very good. That sounds cool. I mean, we could, we could even ask the DJ if he'd be interested. Although I think I seem to be collecting games more than, than my uh, husband or my best friend is. Okay, D, uh, my husband Joe or my best friend DJ. Um, you know, that they are smart to actually probably put some limits on how many games they play. <laughs> oh, but the game I'm playing, the other game I picked up, which is running on the nights I'm not playing, um, Cred, which is the Murder Hobo campaign. I am doing, um, Ru the Ruins of Aslant, um, AP, which is Pathfinder 1. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, that certainly had a very interesting start. Now, I like bad stuff happening to good characters, you might, especially my characters. That's dark, yeah, see, I like that better. I can actually see that. So, um... I gotta let it dry. Oh, dry, dry out chit chat. So, basically, they had already started the campaign. They had a session zero, I think. And I'm trying to remember if they had another session after that, but basically, they get to the island. But because that's what it is, you're you're on like it's almost like um, what is it? Ro it's Roanoke, I believe, the Lost Colony. They go there to help resupply this ex this exploration outpost, and everyone's gone. Something bad clearly happened. So they're already in the island, so I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I go, I know. I'll say I was there already. I was part of the first expedition. And they find me, unconscious, conscious, whatever. And yeah, they, they found me. Or there was the only one other player for that session. Wow. 
while. I'm looking at the color. The color is so totally different. It's, yeah, maybe it's not that different. Um, they find me, and I'm freaking translucent. Like, you can see, or my characters, not me. I, I'm still, I'm still plenty, uh, opaque. <laughs> you can see, like, blood vessels. I'm like, I close my eyes, I can see outside. I'm like, this is, this is awful. But apparently there is a way to fix it, and the mystery will be solved before the end of book one. I even actually have a mini for that, but we're playing that remotely. So I'm using a photo of the mini uh, for um, basically a token. Although we're more or less doing that theater of the mind too. But the to there are like pictures of a character. It's on Obsidian Portal actually. I think people could check it out if they wanted to. Add a little pearl black around my little gem too. So Gareth, if you, I knew you're still working around. So what are you working on tonight? Anything you want to tell? It must be more Star Wars stuff, I would assume. try to work some of this up here because there is a staff here that I'd like to put kind of in shadow. My lord, there's already been a half hour gone. Where's the time going tonight? Jeez. going to reapply a little bit of that base color. Hopefully I'll finish the scout trips to get most of the Inferno squad done. Cool. Uh, by the way, I really did love uh, your um, overgourd. I do like the tea. I assume it's not done yet. The overgourd's not finished. And I really like the way it's shaping up. The biggest thing I know is it looked like there's definitely some cleaning up yeah, I, that's, that definitely looks like there's some cleaning up you can do around, like, the eyes and such. But, um, but I like it. Now, I like, did like the teeth. I thought those, actually, that, they came out really realistic looking. The candy corn teeth. Which I thought, no, yeah, I see why you stole it. It was a good idea. I actually painted, I painted last year. No, wait, two years ago. It wasn't last year. Two years ago, I painted up a, a standard Beholder. The one from, uh, the one that's actually Xanathar. And he, let's see, okay, so you still have to put in the gums and add some definite candy to it. So yeah, maybe like some dark lining around it. That would, that would probably, you can almost go sketch with, with that, that guy. You know, make, uh, they call, you know, the, like, the co there's this comic style, which there were actually a couple of, some of the, there was a couple of those minis that I was looking at for Best in Show that were done in, like, comic style, all by the same person, too, and they were so cool. So, in case anybody out there doesn't know what comic style is, it's, you think about a comic book and the way how everything's dark lined with the color filled in. So that's kind of what a comic style mini is, and um, yeah, there was some, there were there were some pretty nice ones at ReaperCon for the MSP Open that were totally done that way. Yeah, I said I do like that art style, like from the Borderlands video game style. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's the big thing I noticed is around the main eye, it did need it did need some cleaning up. There was a little bit of like green that gotten onto the face. I was like, I hope he fixes that. <laughs> but otherwise, it's really coming out good though. And I think once it's done, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a really awesome sight to behold. 
Oh, you know what? I think you need to do... Oh, you know what I was thinking on that, too? Um, around the mouths of your little pumpkin. I assume your little pumpkins aren't quite done either. At least I don't want... But I feel like around the mouth, it also needs a little bit of dark lining or something. Or lighter inside, because... Where your where your center where your light is coming from? I hope they aren't done. Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. So that may take you all the way because it's this. You're gonna I'm, clearly you're putting a lot of time into it, and it's gonna be so gorgeous when it's done. I know it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. I can't wait to see it. But by the time you get it done, it may be Halloween. <laughs> I was like going, oh boy, you're starting early, but you know, <laughs> with the amount that's still on it, maybe you'll get, maybe you'll take it all the way to Halloween. I am so excited. I'll tell you, I love Halloween. I love October and uh, painting up Halloween minis. As I said, I have already, I painted up a lot of graveyard pieces. So, um, I'm definitely looking forward to making, painting up that obsidian crypt. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, let's see. Um, I, it's going to say, I don't know if that'll take all month long, but we'll see. It could, because that's a big piece. But I will use big brushes. Which means I gotta get this little lady done. I'm thinking on her maybe one or two more streams max too, actually on her. So now I'm gonna do some highlighting. I know everything's still kind of wet, but that's fine because I want it to blend. But I do, I really, I, I love, I love your concept for the Overgord anyways. And I think it's, it's just going to be spectacular when it's done. So I'll ask you what you asked me. Are you, have you figured out what you're going to put into a Michael Mortar's painting contest? I said, I'm hoping to do something, but. Because if nothing else, maybe it'll give me another good piece to throw the MSP open. Because <laughs> that's where I got the, the diorama. I did it for that. His like, he called it a painting contest, but really it was a diorama contest. Oh, boo! I don't know. If I do something, it'll be another. It'll be another tiny diorama. I think I found. I like. I like coming up with a large one of my larger round bases, and just making a diorama on it. Like I've those people will make big dioramas, but oftentimes I find with a lot of those they don't have enough stuff in it to to support it being such a large diorama. I saw a couple of things like that, like a Reapercon too. And I was like thinking, that's a lot of diorama for, you know, like four minis that are on there. I saw a lot of really good dioramas there too. I mean, and even the stuff that was on those, I mean, it was well painted. But I like, I like, uh, I don't like tons of uh, negative space. That might just be a preference. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why one of, that was one of the reasons why I really liked your werewolf piece that you had. The, what was it? No, it was a, shoot, was a werewolf and a vampire? 
or something like that. I remember the windows you had behind it, which were really cool. I just, I was, I'll be honest, I was really surprised that didn't get a silver. I really thought it would. Because I thought it was really, I thought it was really good. And it had a good story. I mean, you had a pretty well-defined story to it, too, which I know is a big part of dioramas in being entered into that is the story. So I was actually surprised. I thought it for sure that would get a silver. But what do I know? I saw it. There was, the thing that struck me, there were so many bronze metal pieces that I thought were really good and was really kind of surprised they were bronze metal pieces. But then again, judges look at these things a lot closer than I am. So And they're the experts. They're absolute experts compared to me. Although me, when I judge, my favorite thing to judge is color. <laughs> you know what? Something really struck me when I went there. So there are these painters that are just phenomenal painters. Um, but if you actually talk, very few of them why my mark keeps uh, my, my mini keeps going off the mark here and I swear to god I keep hitting my hand on the tape um, but anyways a lot of these mini painters I found there that are that were like the, the um, judges and basically also the teachers and such they um, not a lot of them do commissions which I thought was interesting it's like they paint, they'll paint for, they'll paint probably stuff for Reaper or they'll do streams and things like that. Maybe they teach. But not, I was really surprised that not more of them were like commission painters. And for that matter, like full-time commission painters. But I get, I, I do get it. As a commission painter, it really cuts into um, your ability to do your own personal stuff. That's why I have a closet of shame. These days I gotta put up a sign back there that says closet of shame. <laughs> skeletons, complete with skeletons. I haven't painted up all the skeletons yet. Definitely going to uh, Definitely during the month of October, I'm going to put a focus on Halloween minis, I think, for my daily paints. I am considering, by the way, and it's not going to be like an advertised dream or anything like that, just so, you know, I'm here working anyways. I may just, may just put my cameras on and I'll chat with people if they pop in. I won't. I'll advertise it a little bit, I guess, on like Twitter and such. But I'm thinking of doing a like late evening Friday stream. Just because maybe I can, of course, I'm going to be doing Saturday too. But I do, a, I paint a mini a day and basically, you know, why not, why not stream it? I know, I might, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Maybe Mortar will actually show up. <laughs> Honestly, I get, and by the way, I totally get what he says. You know, it is tough. I'm looking at, like, the gem on that gem I was starting to paint. I'm trying to figure out how I should go about doing this. All right, 
it looks like. So, oh yeah, did you see my rant today? Oh yeah, I think you, no, I don't remember if you, no, you didn't answer me. Did you see my rant today about Games Workshop? Jerks! <laughs> yeah, I know. His weekends are mostly called by Claire, and that's fine. Otherwise, I stream it Saturday on Discord. Yes, on Discord. I saw the. I uh, basically I saw. I get spiky bits as emails now, which is a pretty good. I mean, this is really tiny. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go over it again. <laughs> thrilled with this. So basically if you're an orc player and you want a great white squig which I can't think of the name of the actual model. Well good luck because they're only going to allocate two per store and the big killer about that is there's two builds you can make from that set so one person could order them both. I decided not to be a total raging a-hole and I only ordered one. But I'm like, are you kidding me? Fortunately, I'm like the first person there because pre-orders haven't officially started happening. And my store, local store, is the coolest because they will actually, um, they will actually take my order, even if though it's not officially time yet. And I contacted both, I contacted the, the person who owns it. And then I also contacted, um, Trying to find a color here. Ah, I think I'm gonna just add some white to this. Uh, I I contacted him and then I went to the store myself when I didn't hear from him. And then he of course contacted me five minutes after I left the store saying, "You'll be all set then." So they were only allocating two of that particular set. Oh, Garrett disappeared. Damn it. Bye. Let me know when you're back. <laughs> right, what I'm doing is I'm actually taking that mid-tone and I'm adding some white to it. Because I... I do want to bring it up further. The big thing that I was called out at ReaperCon was that my stuff needs more highlighting. And I am... I totally agreed. I actually figured that might be the feedback I was going to get. thing is so small. thing is really small. It makes it all the tougher to do this. This is a shiny gem, so on the top part, I want a little highlighting of some white here, pure white. I 
Any painting is also about contrast, and I want to bump up some of the contrast areas. I think shiny things are great when you go from light to dark in a fairly short distance. It doesn't look too bad. This thing, thankfully, this brush has a really thin tip on it. Just the tip. <laughs> I have no idea why. I keep having the inclination to go for my drink to wash my brush. I have not actually got it in there yet, though. Actually, good. I'm well. You know what? I love this mini. I love this character. So, if I do say so myself, actually, that makes me sound like it. Uh, I love this character. I'll leave it at that. Um, I think Hero Forge does a nice job too. You know, what I was gonna say. Uh, I noticed with Southern Tom Foolery. They actually use that for the character portraits. They use this this um, Hero Forge thing to make them, which I thought was an interesting idea. But totally works. Things that are really kind of pointed up to the light. Let's see if I can lighten them a little bit more. So that's the other thing I need to think about is I need to think about how light hits my minis a little more. I think I might lighten up the bottom sections a bit. Get away from that totally dark black wash I put in there. This is a little stark. And thank you, Frog. Glad you're still working about. I was wondering if you're editing any of your stuff. So I know you were doing editing stuff on uh, Wednesday nights. So we kind of took you away from that <laughs> to play our game.
There's something on there. Bunsies. I am, but I hop off. I'm so excited for it. Yeah. Sorry, man. I get, I get what you're saying. Although my work finally seems to have uh, settled. Oh my lord! For a long time, I was like, it was just so busy. It was a point where I was getting so far behind, I felt like I'd never catch up. Well, eventually I did, because the work did slow down. It definitely slowed down something that I would consider a normal level. So things are better than they were. But I do have like 9 million things going on outside of work, so I mean, that's my own fault. Stark, I'm gonna turn to my darker color. Well, if you do hot pop frog, I really hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Um And I hope uh, any recording you're doing is gonna is gonna go well and be crazy and fun, but maybe not too crazy. starting color right. oh my wet palette's definitely plenty wet still Just a little, maybe a little too wet. Maybe add a little right there too. 
it's over the blending. All right. The gem is done, cloak is done, what next? There is a little purple thing on her arm. Um, I see something. Did do it a little differently. Mm, I'm trying to find a color that actually works for this purple. Um, yeah, maybe it is like this eldritch purple. Eldritch purple. Comes from the Dungeon Dweller set. Did I tell you guys I love purple? I uh, do, I totally love purple. So, I do have, and with the actual character, I do have a purple vibe going. Especially, you know, when I look at mounts and things to get for her. When I was playing, I haven't had any time to play WoW, and irrespective of all the kerfuffle go going uh, on around Blizzard. I just plain haven't even had time to play. Actually, start this as a. I like this color, shade of purple, actually. I think that's a, it's a pretty good color. I do, I like this color. And I said, I think this might be a good one to base coat her hair too. Let me look at the mini and make sure, yep, that's her hair. I would say the purple hair is where I get started in the whole um, loving purple. I thought, hey, purple hair color would be fun. This character is supposed to be fun. She is fun and vivacious and full of life. Although the funny thing is, one of the first, I think she was level three. I don't remember. She was, she, I want to say she was level three and I played her in a scenario and uh, basically I got a fast initiative and sometimes that's not always a good thing because you end up putting yourself in the line of fire. Oh God, I remember I was talking to you about by the uh, GW rant. And I'll finish talking about this. So 
I said I, I rolled her up as a Pathfinder 2 character. And there's such death from massive damage is a thing. It's a thing in most systems. And in Pathfinder 2, it's you have to go to, I believe it's negative your hit point total. Uh, I was at full health and ran into a friggin' tree that crit hit me. And the only reason why she survived that encounter, and I was looking up the rules like crazy, was because she had a shield with hardness. And that shield took away three points of damage. But uh, basically, he would have, if it didn't have the shield, it would have killed her right, just right. That would have been the number. He rolled exactly what he would have needed. But thankfully, Thankfully, I had that shield, and she lived. Because, I mean, you can bring your characters back in society play, but there are repercussions to doing so. But I remember looking at the damage, calculating out, going, oh no, and then looking up the rule, try, you know, trying to look up the rules to see if there was any way out, and then said, so, you have a shield, right? Oh yeah. Oh, there's the hardness factor. So anyways, that's that's my little purple haired uh, druid and I do, I love her so much. So what I was saying, Gareth, it's, it, it was um, basically, I'm an, I, I wanna build an army of orcs. I've got a couple of, you know, I've got the kill team um, which I can take the orcs from that and put them in an army. I've got the this, this beast snaggers. I want a heavy squig themed orc army. So the centerpiece of this army, well, originally the original centerpiece of this army is going to be one of the two figures that's come, or one of, wait, there's three figures coming out. There's a pain boy and, a, and a, I think a grot, his little assistant. And they're coming out, but I actually already have I have an older version, but it's the same, basically the same two. In that fail cat, in that fail cast crap, <laughs> but I already started working on them uh, and trying to fix it up so I could actually paint them at some point. So I don't really care about that so much. But there is the great white squig, which basically it's a uh, it's Moraz, I think is the name of the orc. And he rides in the back of a great white squig. Now here's the problem. GW is these days has been allocating things in small numbers to stores. And I think it really does kind of hurt the stores, which is sort of why I'm mad at them. And they really, they're only going to allocate two of those per store. And the kicker is there's two versions of that model. You can make a generic uh, just war boss model. So somebody could literally go and buy both versions and no one else would get it. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So I am in there and I'm not being a dick. I'm only ordering one. I'm going to leave the other one for somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I was like ranting because it's like I'm a flipping orc player or I will be. And two? Are you freaking kidding? So I contacted um, contacted the store owner directly because I, I have him on Messenger and he, he does not mind if I actually contact him about this stuff. And he knows I he knows I love orcs and that if I'm gonna do it, it's gonna I'm gonna be an orc player. And so he already knows my track record. Um, oh, and then the other thing that's coming out is called the kill rig. It's this like huge thing, it's being pulled by a squig. It's got a weird boy on top that channels, you know, his power down upon the field. And I originally wasn't going to get it because the price point's a little high. And then the more I started looking at it and talking to my best friend, then I was like, I should get it. So I'm going to get it. I'm going to break over. My piggy bank is cry get crying uncle, I believe is what I said. I'm going to get it. And I put in for that too. Originally I said I'm not going to get it because it's too expensive. 
and I need my money for other things right now. But I have money coming in from commissions and things, so I should be able to do it. But, oh, but those, those are not quite as great, scary, but they're, they put, they're allocating five per store. And it's like, geez, I mean, five with that price point might be okay. But two, two of something that you can build two models from. That just that's just not right and there is no guarantee they're gonna make more so that was my rant I go my love-hate I was gonna say that's my love-hate relationship with GW I love their models I, I I love their models I don't love their paints because of the bottles they're in. I also think though too, I think there's something in the mix that those paints dry out easier and get clumpy. Don't me well let my figure dry here and figure out what the hell I'm gonna do next. Um I love their washes, I love their technical paints, and I love their contrast paints. Those are all good. That's it, that's the regular you know, these guys. I don't love, I have them because they're easy to get, but I don't love them. They're not as, to me, Reaper makes better paint, and so does in P3 or Privateer Press. Um, they all have their pros and cons. I mean, all paints have their pros and cons. I do, no, I actually do clean the lids. I, so, you know, you know the people out there in this world that put glue in their fingers and peel it off because it's fun to peel it off? I'm one of those people. So I like to peel paint. There's something satisfying about it. So I tend to clean out my lids pretty consistently. And they still dry out. <laughs> they still separate. I find that's more of an issue. They separate. So, yeah. Now, my bestie actually has taken and decanted some of those paints into dropper bottles. And you actually add... Um, you add you add some sort of a medium to it, and they they actually it changes the consistency a bit too. So they're a bit they're more flowy, and I'm like you know I kind of like this, but the thought of doing all just the work of doing all those bottles just doesn't appeal. Yeah, exactly. You have way too many to think about doing that now. Well, I mean. I mean, you could just do some, you know, some that you really like to use or whatever, or that you don't use and it'll keep them fresher longer. But, um, I, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying there and that's why I don't want to do it. I mean, I, I don't have tons, but I have enough that it's a little prohibited. Actually, I missed a spot. I think it's a hair. You know, I could find it out. Hmm, it's interesting. It's kind of both her hair and her cloak. It's like this right in here. Oh my lord, that's not a lot of room. Get rid of all the white spots. <sighs> yeah, that's too many. But I said, you could always take some you really like and do it. Don't do it for the whole batch. And the other thing is like the washes and the, the, the ink washes and thing and the contrast paints, they don't dry out. Because they're too liquidy. There's too much liquid in them. Moist. Oh, moist. That's true. Too moist. Yep, they are too moist. I was gonna say they're out lightly wet, but I'll take it because you get to use the moist <laughs> button.
No, I'll admit, I had fun talking early tonight about games and such. Actually, Gareth, are you playing in any D&D &D games or anything right now, or you're just mostly painting? Or even Warhammer? I know you've, you've got Warhammer stuff, I think. At least I think you do. Let's see if we can take a little bit of pure white and add it right in the middle of this. It's actually, yeah, it's funny. I got my sweatshirt on and it's freaking warm in here. Not anymore right now. I'm going to try and learn the new kill team. Oh, cool. That's, you know, I will admit for a, for the price you paid for that set, I think it was really worth it. I am actually kind of impressed by how much stuff is in that box. That box weighs a ton. It's, it's amazing how, how heavy it is. Yeah, that's nice and shiny looking now. Trying to figure out, I got a couple paints here. I like to play more, but with the way things are, most people, they rather not respect that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I always, I always hate that. I'm in so many games, I almost feel guilty because there's there are people out there who can't get a game. And unfortunately, most of my games now have officially have gone back to in person. I've got you know. Although, if you want to play in a murder hobo one shot, I can give you the. Um, what did I do? Oh, I put the wrong color out there. Whoops. Sorry, I put I put more Eldritch purple out, which was the base coat. I need the lighter. I need a lighter purple here. I'm going with that Phrasma purple. I really love this color. I say if you liked Pathfinder, and if I knew if you take another person, I'd ask you if you want to play bi-weekly Thursdays, <laughs> because I do have we have an uh, adventure path that's just starting up run by one of the best GMs I know. So I'm so excited to be working with them. And it's already started off with a bang too. need to lighten this up a hair more. But we do have but bi-weekly Saturdays and this is and actually this week is one of them. We do one shots where anybody can just jump in and play and if you're a new player you get priority to go play. So usually usually new players can get right on the week they sign up. And that's mhoboink at gmail.com if you want to contact them Saturday nights, 7.30 green room, 8 o'clock is uh, game time. And it's about a two hour game. Depending on whether or not the GM goes over. It's been known to happen. Although our main leader tends not to run over. So it is kind of a bummer though when you're when you I don't know. I remember there was a time that I that I did end up um look if I brush to actually fix paint with I remember there was a time when I actually basically stopped playing games. But that's not now. <laughs>
Because truth be told, I think you would be, I feel like you'd be a pretty good role player too. You are, yeah, I, I kind of get that sense. Um, you're good at coming up with snarky commentary on the fly. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Wait a little more white. Why am I put more white in this? I want more for us with purple. I believe that. Um, I'm the one who can't do voices for shit, so. I try, I do try, but I find it very hard to stay consistent. I do try to at least throw a little in my voice at times. But no, that doesn't, for some reason, that does not shock me in the least that you can do voices. As of the work in this one, I'm going to actually take one of those criticisms that I got at, or feedback that I got at ReaperCon in mind, and I'm going to try to highlight this hair all the way up to like white, or a slight off white. Because hair is technically shiny and reflects light. But see, you had to DM so much that you, oh, you, oh, you were a perpetual DM? Ah! I had to DM so much I tried different ones for different characters, and this is before I even watched Critical Role. And that, I mean, then those guys are voice actors, so. But, I mean, the funny thing is, I know, I knows with Matt, there's only so many different voices he can do. Some of them get repeated, <laughs> but I mean, he plays so many roles. I mean, that makes sense. Like I said, just throwing it out there. If you ever want to play and not be a GM, you can always play on there because We'll definitely have a seat for you. And hell, you've already got a good streaming setup. So, we play off of Zoom. So, uh, well, let's see. Critical Role Campaign 3 must be started up at some point. I would think soonish. Although I'm happy. I think uh, Narrative Telephone's back, which is one of my favorite things they actually do. And I don't know if you've seen it, but Lord, that is hilarious. Because it's telephone, so one person. They have one person tell a two minute story and then we watch it go through everyone else. And the only person they see is the person who, who has the recording before them. They don't, only one person sees the original recording. That's the person who goes first and trying to retell it. They watch it once and then have to try to retell it exactly. And they never do. <laughs> and it's so hilarious that it just, can't stop laughing at it. It's the funniest thing on TV. <laughs> and Technic, I don't know if you call it TV. It's the funniest thing on your computer? But that is back with the, uh, with the cast from Exandria. Alright. Oh, I want to go. 
lighter. I actually really enjoy doing hair. I'm not sure why, but I do find I enjoy doing hair for some reason. This is going to be really light. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's see. It is going to be really light. I also say use a light hand when you do this stuff. Don't press the brush down too much. just want to hit the tops of the hairs here. Eh, that's kind of under the antler. So I'm going to leave that. I just want to hit the tops of these. I'm only coming down a part of the way, but not all of the way on those longer ones. Eee, get in there. Yeah, I'll hit it a little bit. make a little bit of an in-between color here. Not quite as light as above, just to highlight some of these ends. They're a little lower and I don't want them quite as bright as the top. I'm going fairly bright. It's actually like almost just white on my brush here. Yeah, I need some actual white. My white's all mixed in with other colors, so. Said. I'm trying to take the advice and make my hair highlights bright.
That looks all right. I need to see, I know something. I think I want to do, going back into my, one of my highlight colors, but not my total dark color. And I'm going to go back in some of this and lighten up the, as a whole, lighten this up on the top. Because honestly, it's a little too dark. I know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I made everybody mad so that people, I'm thinking people are just busy. I know my two weekday streams seem to be quiet. My Saturday stream was, as I said, was absolutely hopping last Saturday. Come back in with a little bit of a slightly darker color. Yeah, so it had like 15 people show up on Saturday. I mean, granted, when half of that's why I'm thinking of doing like a late night Friday stream. Who knows? But yeah, some of my regulars aren't on, around tonight either because I don't know where Kevin is or I'm assuming busy. He's around part of Monday. I don't care. As long as I have somebody here to actually talk to. I, I you know, I don't know if people don't believe me when I say all I really want is a couple people to hang out with and chat while I'm working. Anything else I get off of it is just a bonus. I feel like that's pretty good, but it's still, it's funny. I even used white and it still to me doesn't look. I don't know, I like it though. Maybe I could hit it with one more hit of white. Um, you probably know if it was COVID. I'll just say that. Um, oh, by the way, well, it's been two weeks, so you're probably in the clear. But I did get a notification on my phone last week that somebody brought COVID to the con. Just, I didn't even think about it. I should have friggin' messaged you. But we were all vaccinated and we were wearing masks. I got nothing, no symptoms. My husband had, doesn't have it or anything. As I was saying, if anyone said, you know, wants to challenge the, the validity of masks and vaccines working, well, here I am to prove they do. So I assume, I mean, so I don't think you're happy. It's been over two weeks since we were last there. So. If you don't have it by now, it didn't come from a ReaperCon. But to be honest, I would have been surprised if I didn't get any, you know, if I didn't uh, come in contact with it while I was there. I mean, when you're with a thousand people and they're not checking vaccine cards, and even then, people can pick it up. You know, I was, I mean, I was pretty sure I was going to come in contact with it. So it wasn't really shocking to me at all. No, no, no. And I'm not either. I mean, anybody who's going to go to a convention right now is at your own risk. It is not the con's fault. All right. 
Yeah, no, I know you're not. But, um, and I believe me, I'm not either. I said, if you go, and that's the thing is, when I went, I knew this was a risk that I was taking. You know, I'm going to now be with about a thousand other people. It's bound to happen. But because of all the masks and the vaccines that most people probably had, we, I, you know, I've been sort of been reading the, you know, Reaper chats and stuff, and there's been nothing. There's been nothing about anybody bringing home or anything like that. So their policies worked. It absolutely worked. So, you know. But it was a little, it was a little, you know, it was a little freaky when my phone goes off and it's a, it's the freaking COVID notification network saying that somebody had reported in that they, they apparently tested positive and it was somebody I had contact with. I think that's a rather ingenious, ingenious, uh, I think that's really ingenious that they're using phones and such for that. I was like, wow, that's actually pretty cool when I think about it. That they can contact, they can basically trace, you know, if somebody tests positive, they can trace it through your Bluetooth, you know, through Bluetooth on your phone. And I'm all for it. I'm all for this kind of tech. There are people, I'm sure, out there that would think that it's it's intrusive. But, I mean, like a lot of things with this pandemic, it's a health issue. And I'm okay, you know, giving out info if it'll actually protect people. Because that's who I am. When I got home from having my first shot, I actually put down on my Facebook page, you know, that I was uh, out, you know, doing my part to save the world. And I think, feel like anybody who, who actually goes through and gets a vaccine or whatever, I think, I think you are a hero. You are doing your part to help save the world. How often can you be a hero? <laughs> cool yet slightly disconcerting from some aspects. Fair. Mm, I want something. I gotta actually. I want to line that around that. I want to do a little line around the uh, around the um, whatever is it? That little. Uh, piece of cloth that's wrapped around her arm. Uh, I have it. Of course, once again, I'll mention that her base coat is drowned nipple pink. So, there you go. <laughs> Fine, I will hydrate. You can see I'm not the best hydrator if I do it myself. That's This was full. That's been an hour and a half, and I have not killed it yet. But that's, like, normal for me. I, um, I'll have, like, a can of Coke, and I'll be three hours later, I'll still be killing it off. Like this just needs a little something something to shadow between that cloth that said in our arm. Right 
there too. I mean, these are all shadowed. There's all things in shadow. Oh. Yeah, now I feel like an idiot. I should have at least mentioned it to you two that, that, that my phone pinged. But neither one of you two said you were feeling sick until now. I still will go with it's probably hay fever. Usually you can tell. If it's in your nose, it's probably hay fever. COVID seems like it's more of a, a lung thing that gets into your lungs. Okay, that's not coming out of the bottle. <laughs> pokey, oh, pokey, ooh, pokey tool time. And that was pretty cool. It's funny, I use this paint pretty often too. I'm surprised it's clogged up. I'm putting out some bone colors. So I've got, I've got this bone triad that I'm gonna use to paint the, uh, I probably should paint the antlers or two. If I can get in there. Here's one for you, Gareth. It's kind of a tight fit. The thing too is if you get this, you know, every year, I assume you can still smell though. Like you still have a sense of smell and I mean, you could always get tested if you're not sure. But I mean, if this is like your same old, same old every year allergy you get this time of year, that's probably what it is. And by the way, just for, yeah, you know, no, see, I, I will I will do this so because it's a bits thing but I will do it uh, what the hell is it that's what she said there you go <laughs> there have been times like I've been like paranoid about you know, I know I haven't come across it. Like, this time, if I actually felt sick, I probably would have gone and get tested. But I never felt sick. And I said, my husband's fine. Everybody's fine. And now it's been two weeks, so... I should be good. Nobody at my work gets... I don't get any... I don't really get near anybody at my work, other than my supervisor, and only on a limited basis. And maybe a couple of other people I talk to. But once again, I don't tend to hang out at close range and chit chat and I kind of when I did go to chit chat and such I made sure I stayed away from people so I wasn't too worried because all the protections they had going and I said it was true it worked One of the conventions, I am going to a couple more conventions because I'm really going to tempt fate now. I'm going to a couple more conventions. Uh, one, the weekend. And of course, I actually won't be streaming those weeks because I won't be here. Um, but the weekend, like the 20, October 22nd, that's the anime con I'm involved in. And which is known as another anime con. And boy, has that been a headache to set up this year because of all the things that I need to do to protect people. I gladly do it, but it seems like every year at that con, since I took over organizing the whole artist alley and vendor room, there's been another freaking problem <laughs> every year, except for like the first two years. I kind of like it because I like a challenge. So, but I'll be doing that that the weekend is said like October 22nd and then 2 weeks later I'll be going to Carnage. 
the Carnage Gaming Convention up in uh, Mount Snow, Mount Snow in Vermont, and hmm. Let me go over these and maybe darken them a bit because I kind of kind of want to do what I did on the uh, on the on the part, and I want to keep the bottom these these ones on our shoulder pads. The pauldrons, aka. I want to keep them darker than the antlers. So the paint is shining the light. I can't, I'm looking at like, I can see like a little white spot in there, but it's because the paint is shiny. making these a hair darker. to her antlers. Now I know the reality is they are um, they're fawn antlers but one of the pieces of gear that I have for her actually or a couple of them have antlers and those tend to be my more favorite druid pieces. So I wanted antlers. The implication is they're on some sort of headband. Let's see. So the inside of that needs to stay somewhat dark. It's definitely shadowed in here. And under here. Get the other one. Mm, I'm going 
see how it gets right there. go back and lighten parts of this a little bit more. Which drives me nuts that there's a little glare of light because there's a little bit of sheen to this paint. And I have indeed. It keeps moving around so I know I've painted it. So that's aged bone and then polished bone for my highlights. Getting the parts that have the most light. And sometimes I actually dab it with my finger and I can kind of blend it in. I'm gonna go back in and lightly add a little bit of definition there. Add a little, a little bit of shadowing in there. I feel like it needs it. Okay, a little bit of this just to add. A bit to the tops of this. I keep thinking I do I do want to add music to my stream at some point. It's hard to talk the whole time. Especially if or especially when it's a quieter night. Oh. Just realize I'm a king. Just got a little bit of green paint that I don't want there. No big deal, you just I remember what colors I used. I can get it out of the bottle. Pokey stick time. Hmm. That wasn't too terrible going in. 
this is what she said. No, I don't want green paint on a hand. Fixing these lines with the hair. I know this isn't exactly the color I used, but it's close enough. I'm going to go back over. I'm going to go back over the, the, the thingies, as Michael Mortar says. This is really tight. However, oh, again, it's kind of a tight fit here. Not a lot of room. That's better. That's better. Look at her other hand too. Looks like it needs to come down just a little more so it's coming off the fingers here. some really good progress on this tonight. Let's see. I got five minutes left. What am I gonna do for five more minutes? I could, I guess, start working on the little the base coat, that pushing pot. Now, I picked a blue potion because Zelly is a spell. Oh my god, gel tip. Gel tip, I'm here for five more minutes. Mm. <laughs> it's going. It's a quiet night. I will say this last Saturday was hopping, but my weeknights have been really quiet lately. Yeah, I'm on from 8 30 till 10 30. Oh, what time? Hey, that's a good question. What time is your stream on Fridays? I don't really particularly want to. I, I want to. I'd rather come visit you than. Uh, I'm thinking of streaming after my Starfinder game on Fridays, just doing, but not. Oh, it starts at 10? <sighs> it could be a really late night stream. Then maybe I'll get people from Europe over here. Uh, to visit me. But then I see them later on Saturday anyway, so go figure. I'm thinking about maybe at some point, maybe, I like not advertising, not official, whatever. I do, I do a paint, I paint something every day and I tend to start it fairly late. Maybe just turning my camera on and talking to whoever pops in. We are going to go, I will say this though, we are going to go raid um, Gareth there. 
I don't know. There are a couple people on here. I'll bet you. I wonder. Yeah, he probably popped. I think he popped off. Time. 10 p.m. Yeah, I usually do two hours. So I start at 8.30 and go to 10.30. Uh, I find two hours is about what I can deal with. Um, by the time the end, I'm starting to get tired. So, so yeah. I, I did miss you last Saturday. I mean, Saturday. I missed you last Sunday. I knew you weren't going to. No, I wouldn't be starting until like 10, so. <laughs> I know. Well, how late do you go on? How late do you go, by the way? All right, Gareth, we'll be on in a minute. Do you have like a set amount? We can, uh, I don't mind. I would love to, oh, I told you, I would love to dual stream. Actually, Gareth, that, you're another one that, we should dual stream together. We can discuss that. I have, uh, I've been wondering how Gareth and Michael's show is going to work. I don't think it's a dual stream. I think it's an actual show. <laughs> so. That would be fun. So yeah, mine's like the daily paint. <laughs> but as I said, you, I mentioned before, I would love to dual stream with like everybody. Um, because you're just such an enjoyable lot to hang around. So my biggest problem is I need to figure out the sound. <laughs> so like I did it with, I did it with the uh, cap master, uh, that weekend he was looking to multi-stream because he wanted to be on, he wanted to just stream. Because I think something, well, what did, what weekday? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say, can I, well, uh, Monday's the friggin' painting party on um, the Inferno Disco, the Disco, Discord. See, this is why I only stream two hours, because I'm like flipping da, 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 da. Yeah, you mute Twitch and use Discord, but it's, it's, I know that part. That's so you can hear each other. However, it's more, I mean, it said I do Wednesday, but when I, when I do it, it's called the Goblin Devil Feature, so I always raid Carrot afterwards. But Tuesdays, Tuesdays, um... Are you saying like multi-stream on Tuesday? I couldn't do it. Ugh. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Friday would Friday at ten would be better for me to pop on a multi-stream with you. Tuesdays Tuesdays I'm not streaming though at all because I've got. Well, I am, but it's not on my channel. I do um. I do a podcast. I'm oh, sorry. I do a Twitch stream, uh, D and D related. But it's not a game, it's a talk show. And I do that on, on mostly every other Tuesday. Although next week I'm actually gonna be able to, to tune in to the uh, real estate stream that Big Jim Slade's gonna do. Cause I'm not doing anything that night, as far as I know. But eventually we're gonna probably start our Tuesday night game again that we left off suspended when the uh, when COVID happened. Yeah, I know. Well, see, I know that. But here's, here's the thing. For people hearing us, I didn't have it set up right so they could hear both chats. They could hear it through Cap Masters, but they could, they, they could hear both of us on Cap Masters, but they couldn't hear both of us on mine. And I mean, I don't know, and I, I kind of want to set it up that way, so that way you mute one of the streams and not the other. All right, he's on. We can, you said, if you want, come over with me. And, um, cause Gareth is awesome. Uh, he's gonna be doing Star Wars minis, by the way, if that makes a difference. We can, we can chat, as I said, we can chat, it's tomorrow. <laughs> you can always hit me up over Discord, too. You, I mean, I'm not hard to, 
Yeah, you, it's not hard to find a Discord, and if worse comes to worse, I can always, if I'm home or whatever, what am I doing tomorrow? Oh, I'm gaming tomorrow, because, you know, I get a game most friggin' every day, and if my schedule keeps getting worse, it's my own damn fault. I keep adding games, because I love, I love to play games. I love to play, love to roleplay. But yeah, as I said, I'm not hard to find, so... You can absolutely, I don't mind chatting. So, all right, let's go over to Garrett's. Thanks, thanks to those of you who did come and hang out. Oh wait, before I do that, by the way, I finally found my musical. I couldn't see him right away. What is, what is it? I mean, it said, I'll be deaf. I'm not going to read and run, by the way. I'll definitely be hanging out on a stream. Oh, Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, I think I have. Yeah, I've heard of that musical. Sorry you couldn't see it, because I think it's a really good. Oh, you mean it, it's, they're going to they're gonna run it in Portsmouth, and you can go see it now? I'm trying to remember. Is that going to be outdoors? It, I know exactly where that I if it's it's Pre, uh, Prescott Park, right? No, okay, I can't remember if that's the name of the park. I remember, I remember as a kid, they would run musicals outside, right on the river, under the shadow of the bridge, one of the bridges. Okay, okay, okay. But they used to do musicals outdoor, and it was friggin', it was so cool. I mean, you just go out to make sure you bring lots of bug spray. And you watch, you watch mu outdoor musicals outdoors, and it was just, it was the coolest thing. We saw, I forget how many, we saw a number, and they were all musicals, too. But they were more or less things like Music Man, I remember Annie Get Your Gun, um, a lot of the classics, so... But that's great. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're actually getting a chance to go there. Damn it! I'm so mad you didn't pop in earlier. I would have loved to have chatted with you about this stuff. All right. And as once again, I said you were definitely missed on on Sunday. Um, it was that was quiet too. I only had, didn't have. I don't even think I hit ten people, but I didn't care. It was so. It was nice, actually. I mean, because it wasn't too harried. You know, enough people to chat with. And, and I saw Big Jim Slade and Kevin, or Crimson. And I had, did have some new people come in. So it was, it was still a lot of fun. I think people, it was a beautiful day. So, and you knew that, because I assume it was a beautiful day in May. <laughs> All right, we got to go to his. We got to raid. Or otherwise he's gonna wonder where the hell I am and I've got I've got to do my I still haven't determined a date it could be I know time is really short it could end up being the 10th and I can't find out till Sunday what's going on in my Sunday game because the 22nd and the first weekend of November, I'm away at conventions, so things are going to have to switch around. And I'm glad Maine was good. Otherwise, don't worry. I will have one in November and one in December, I'm sure. I'll have a Christmas painting party. <laughs> I almost thought about doing it on Halloween. I mean, depending on if the game doesn't switch and we just take off a number of weeks, we could have a Halloween painting party. So there's that too. So stay tuned. I will absolutely let you know when the date is and as soon as I figure it out. So, all right, we're going to raid Gareth. And thank you for tuning in. Those of you who tuned in, I always appreciate it. Even if it's not that many people, I don't care. There's someone to talk to, and that's all that matters to me. So... Have an awesome night. I'll be back streaming on Saturday. Right, Gel Tip, take this down. Saturday at 12.30 p.m. for two hours. And then we raid the ball GM. 
So have a great night. We'll see how many people are paying attention. Oh, everyone is. All right, come on. Here we go. Boom.